Welcome Vice President Pence, Secretary DeVos, our Board of Education members, and esteemed panelists, as well as all our guests to our Waukesha Saratoga STEM Academy. I appreciate the opportunity to have everyone here today in our, just one of our district's charter schools, uh, and I look forward to sharing more on our public school choice in Waukesha. Um, Secretary DeVos, I have to tell you that I've been trying to get you to visit our schools over the last few years, and you finally made it with uh, one week to go in my career. So thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, one of the things we do in, in, in Waukesha is use our public school choice to the fullest. Literally every one of our schools are open to any student if there's a seat available. Any student can go anywhere provided there's an open seat. Um, we have four charter schools. Uh, including this, this one of the STEM charter schools you're in here today. We have an engineering preparatory academy, academy of health professionals, as well as an alternative school for students who tend to struggle in regular high schools. Uh, we have a kindergarten through 12th grade full immersion uh, dual language program at, at multiple schools that's, that is also open to students outside the district. We have eAchieve Academy, which is a full virtual school serving K through 12 students. Uh, we, we educate right now about 1,000 students under that from around the state, and my expectation is that could easily double uh, going into next year. Um, we also have public and private partnerships with Montessori School of Waukesha. Um, we also have public-private partnerships with Waukesha Area Preschools for our four-year-old kindergarten. These. Uh, uh, choice programs that we've done has helped us both financially as well as academically and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to share that with you today. With that I turn it over to Vice President Pence. Well thank you very much Todd. Thank you for uh, the warm welcome. Thank you for your great leadership as the superintendent of the school district of Waukesha and I know we are just a few days away uh, from uh, your retirement after 36 years in education. So I wanted to invite everybody to join me in thanking you, uh, not just for hosting us today, but for a lifetime in education and the difference that you've Thank made you. here in Wisconsin. Thank you so much. Really, it's an honor to be with you. Thank you for those thoughtful comments uh, about the value of school choice, public and uh, private. Uh, school choice here across Wisconsin. I'm looking forward uh, to a conversation that uh, has been going on in this state now for some 30 years. Wisconsin has been in the forefront of empowering parents with the right to choose whatever school they want their children to attend, whether that's a public school, a public charter school, a private or a religious school. And, uh, and I want to, I just want to congratulate all of the members of the panel here today who've been so involved in that effort. We had a memorable day at your state house earlier this year. Seems like a very long time ago to me, uh, but I saw the enthusiasm. I met with families and children that have benefited uh, by the opportunity to make that choice as a family. And I see some bright young people and some families here with us today. And I just want to extend uh, my congratulations to uh, each and every one of you. I also want to extend uh, greetings from a great champion. Uh, of giving parents the right to choose where their children go to school. The 45th President of the United States of America, I told him I was on my way to Wisconsin today, uh, and I think he sounded just a little bit jealous. <laughs> he loves this state, he loves this issue, and I know he'd want me to extend his greetings. Uh, but I will also tell you that uh, when the President uh, and I went looking uh, for someone to lead the Department of Education who would understand uh, the value of empowering parents in this country. We need look no further uh, than, uh, than Betsy DeVos, who's done an incredible job uh, as the Secretary of Education. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Betsy, for all you've done for America's children and families. I'm also pleased to be with another member of the administration's team. I am sure you have already recognized her from uh, her many appearances on television. She is a, an assistant to the president, a senior advisor, but this I kn I've known her for more than 30 years and uh, she's also been a great champion of empowering parents with the right to choose where their children go to school. Kellyanne Conway, thank you for being here. Thank you for being such a champion for families as well. Uh, 
Uh, and to members of the Board of Education of the School District of Waukesha, thank you for the hospitality. I know uh, uh, Tammy Olivas is going to lead a conversation in just a few minutes, but thank you for uh, the work you've done uh, at Hispanics for School Choice and, and Director of uh, Outreach. I also want to thank uh, Jim Bender, the President of School Choice Wisconsin, uh, James Siebert, who is the incoming uh, superintendent with the unenviable task of following you. <laughs> Uh, in that role, uh, and also the, I just met the principal of the uh, Waukesha STEM Academy where we're gathering, uh, plate with a great reputation. Uh, James Murray, thank you. Thank you for the hospitality today, for opening up this uh, great facility. You know, it was 30 years ago uh, with uh, Governor Tommy Thompson that, uh, that Wisconsin made history and established the very first school choice program in America. Uh, my friend Governor Scott Walker built on that progress. He expanded the program statewide. Uh, and today, in that program alone, I'm informed that more, more than 43,000 students are able to attend uh, the school of their choice. Uh, and, uh, and, and in that spirit, I, I also want to extend gratitude to the Senate Majority Leader, Scott Fitzgerald, who is with us here today. Thank you very much, Leader. Thanks for your support for Wisconsin families' right to choose. For the children go to school. Good to see you again. Um, you know, I can honestly say for my part, I was for school choice before it was cool. Uh, uh, it would be in the early 90s, uh, looking on at what Wisconsin was doing uh, and the groundbreaking work in this great state uh, that I uh, uh, gave voice to that aspiration in Indiana. And I'm proud to say when I became governor of Indiana, uh, we were able to more than um, I believe more than double uh, the enrollment in our school choice program uh, in the Hoosier State. And, uh, and I can honestly tell you that uh, in one of the very first conversations President Trump and I had when he was considering me for this role now four years ago uh, was on this topic. Um, and, uh, and, and the President was a great admirer of Wisconsin's leadership in this space, what Indiana had done. Uh, and, uh, and, it, and I know it was one of the, one of the very first issues that we had very strong agreement on early on and have worked on ever since. I'm proud to report since uh, the first days of our administration, we've worked to uh, expand opportunities for families. The president, uh, uh, in the first few months in office, authorized the Washington, D.C. Opportunity Scholarship Program. It is uh, the only federally funded voucher program in the country. We've more than more than uh, increased uh, enrollment there by 50 percent. We also changed the tax laws in this country so that now parents can use their college savings accounts uh, to uh, send their kids to a quality school at every level of education. But as we speak, uh, and the Secretary may elaborate on this in a few moments, we're working on uh, a new program that would, would uh, make more than $5 billion available uh, across the country uh, in the form of education freedom scholarships. We want to we want to make it possible to empower parents uh, to be able to make that choice where their children uh, go to school. Uh, for my part, I am the product of private education and public education, and I cherish both, uh, just like every American does. I went to a Catholic grade school uh, for eight years, St. Columba Catholic School, but then I went to a public high school. Uh, I went to a private college, and then I went to a public university for graduate school. And one of the things that, uh, that Superintendent Gray and I were speaking about is a conviction the President and I have is that, um, that empowering parents to choose where their children go to school doesn't simply make better education available for those families. We, we believe the competition makes everybody better. It's one of the things that uh, Superintendent Gray and I reflected on just before I came out. In fact, you've seen evidence of that uh, here in Wisconsin, where uh, not only have, uh, have we seen uh, students in the parental choice program scoring higher on ACT tests, uh, children from particularly uh, underserved communities uh, uh, having a higher graduation rate uh, across the state, but also you've seen, uh, you've seen higher performance in public schools. It's, uh, uh, the, you know, the Bible says iron sharpens iron, uh, and so one person sharpens another. And uh, I truly do believe, as the president does, uh, and as Wisconsin has demonstrated every day, that by, by empowering parents where to choose where their children go to school, we're, 
Uh, we're inviting excellence all across uh, education, and you're certainly seeing that. Uh, there's a couple of great students here that I wanted to give a shout out to, and then I'm going to turn it over to Tammy, um, just because we've got some uh, incredible kids in the audience. There's a, a Waukesha Academy uh, of Health student. She's a junior, I'm told, uh, who teamed up with United Way in the midst of the challenging time through which we just passed. And, uh, to, and she made 700 masks in just four days and prepared bagged lunches for local families in need. Her dad's actually a retired FBI agent, uh, and, uh, and they just demonstrated uh, just a great commitment to the community, and, and uh, I was inspired to hear she, Jessica uh, Felsky and her dad, Jack Felsky, where are you both? Are you out here somewhere? Would you mind standing up and taking a bow? Thank you. Jessica, great job. Really great job. Another one of the great students who are here who've, uh, who've demonstrated uh, great character uh, in and out of the classroom uh, is a sixth grader at Horning Middle School. Um, I'm told he learned how to sew in summer school a few years ago, so he worked with his grandmother to sell his own creations at a local craft store. But when, uh, when he heard from his aunt, who is a nurse at a children's hospital in Iowa, that they needed more masks, he didn't wait to be asked. He started making and donating them himself. Uh, and it's, uh, he's always already an inspiring person. He was actually diagnosed uh, with cancer in kindergarten, but I'm so grateful to hear that he's been cancer free for six years. He's out there making a difference, making a difference in this state, in Iowa, and inspiring the country. Where's Colin Anderson? Colin, are you here? Stand up and take a bow, young man. Well done. <laughs> Great job, Colin. Proud of you. Well, uh, it, you know, it's, it's no surprise uh, that support for educational choice for families is growing all across America. Uh, since 2011, the number of Wisconsin schools and students participating in the Parental Choice Program has doubled. Last year alone, uh, I'm told it increased by 37 percent. Um, and uh, now one in eight Wisconsin students are educated uh, with public funds at the school of their choice. We really believe school choice is an idea whose time has come. Uh, and I particularly believe that, um, that, uh, that every parent should be able to choose where their kid go to school, goes to school, regardless of their area code or income. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that's gathered here. I look forward to the updates on Wisconsin's progress in advancing a parental choice in this state. Uh, but just know that you've been, you've been opening doors of opportunity for these great young people. You've been opening, uh, opening pathways for prosperity, particularly to families that would not otherwise uh, have the means to make those choices. And so on behalf of your president and on behalf uh, of our entire team and a grateful nation, I just want to say thank you, Wisconsin. Thank you for your example. Uh, and I look very much forward to our discussion today. Thank you all. Tammy? Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, Secretary DeVos, I know that um, the people in Wisconsin want, want to hear a little bit about you, so can we have a few remarks from our Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos? Thank you so much, Tammy, and Mr. Vice President, thank you so much for convening us here today for your and the President's leadership on this really important and timely issue. Um, school choice is a, an idea whose time has indeed come. And uh, I think it, it should not go without saying that the last three to four months have been challenging for educators and parents and families across the country. And I just want to say how inspired I've been by all of the educator, education leaders who have really stepped up to the plate and uh, to the occasion and done what they've needed to do to ensure that learning has continued for their students. And a special note to the teachers who've gone that extra mile and um, risen to the occasion in, in circumstances that nobody chose, and yet we all found, found ourselves there. And I know in talking to parents, they're very eager for a return to some kind of normalcy, whatever that means to uh, to each student and their family, but I think it's also um, revealed to many families that perhaps their students learned differently than they had expected or known. 
and there has been a lot of learning on the part of parents and families about what education might look like going forward for that child or that family. And um, this has really presented us an unprecedented opportunity to continue to rethink what a K-12 education experience should look like for every child and knowing that every child is really very unique and different. And I really appreciated Superintendent Gray uh, talking with you beforehand about the many different ways in which the Waukesha District has continued to rise to meet those challenges and those opportunities to serve students um, and meeting them where they're at. And this STEM Academy is a great example of uh, a, a choice school that um, is in high demand. More than 100 students wanting to get in that can't. And because it's a project-based, uh, very hands-on, competency-based approach. And um, so just all that to say, we celebrate the ways in which Wisconsin has continued to advance opportunities. Uh, the birthplace in Milwaukee of school choice now 30 years ago. Um, and uh, Vice President Pence, you uh, have also acknowledged your leadership on this front in Indiana, um, dramatically expanding the choice programs there under your governorship and, um, and uh, really helping to foster the growth and creation of strong public charter school options and the innovations within the traditional public schools. I've visited um, more than one of those to see how each community and each school is really trying to meet the needs of the students that they're serving. So um, again, we have every reason to come together again now and to do what's right for students across the country because we know that more students need school choice now than ever before. And the President's uh, Education Freedom Scholarships plan would help to address that need in a, in a very significant, transformative way. Um, very briefly, it's a historic voluntary investment into a federal tax credit fund that would be, um, select, that states would select to participate in or not. And it, they could choose creative and innovative approaches to meet the needs of students in their state and uh, particularly with a focus on the most vulnerable students who today don't have those choices. Uh, the scholarships would be 100% privately funded through tax credit contributions from businesses or individuals, and it would give and empower families in states that participated the opportunity to choose an education setting that's right for them, a personalized education experience, one that fits the, the, the kind of education that child needs. We know that there's great demand for this. There is 78% support in this country for the Education Freedom Scholarship proposal. Importantly, among uh, Latino and African American uh, communities, 83% support. Uh, this is an idea whose time has come. We have 109 co-sponsors currently in the House and 15 in the Senate. And today we have a president, President Trump and Vice President Pence, who are champions for this issue and who know that this is the right thing to do for students. So um, I just am really looking forward to the conversation today and uh, to hearing from um, the rest of our panelists on the great progress that Wisconsin continues to make and uh, specifically, and I, I want to specifically thank the students who have joined us here today as well, um, because this is really about you and your futures. We need each one of you. We need you greatly for this country. And so uh, thank you all for being here today, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Great. Tammy, if I could just amplify one point of the Secretary of Education. I know we're here to talk about educational choice and the future and opportunities, and Wisconsin's a great example, but um, I'm married to a school teacher. Uh, my wife teaches art uh, at a little Christian school, and uh, so I can testify firsthand about how hard teachers have worked in public and private schools all across this country during the challenging days through which we pass. So, uh, to every one of the teachers who are here, thank you. Thank you for, for keeping, uh, keeping education moving forward. 
you kids who did your homework from the kitchen table instead of the classroom, great job. But uh, why don't we hear it for all of our teachers, for all that they've done here in Wisconsin over the last year. Great job. And, uh, Echoing your, your words about how important our educators are, uh, we can't deny the fact that education has changed. It's happening. Um, we, we face uh, COVID-19, a pandemic that moved us um, overnight to virtual education. Mm -hmm. So Chris, I would like to hear from you um, what you think and how do you think this will shape the school choice moving forward. Well, um, I'm Chris, Mr. Vice President. Thanks for coming back to Wisconsin. It's my fourth time seeing you in four years. Yeah. And so it's good to see you again. Um, you too, Chris. Same, same to Secretary DeVos. She actually visited my daughter's school a few months ago. So I got to sit on a round table with her. It's good to see you again. Uh, for me, I have a different, I have a few hats. I, um, as you can see, I'm a program director for No Better Friend Court. We advocate for school choice. Um, we actually just had a podcast where we talked to school choice parents called The Right Idea Podcast. Um, and we talked to parents, we talked to students, um, and you really got to hear directly how school choice really benefits families. And it's always great to hear directly from the families because um, you know, I'm involved in it too. And my other hat is I'm a parent, and I have three kids that go to St. Marcus Lutheran in Milwaukee, a choice school in Milwaukee. Um, actually, one of my daughters is here. And so I'm, and I just, you know, I've been through the school choice process. They've been there since K-4. I went to public schools in Milwaukee. Um, my kids go to choice schools. And um, I tell you that that power as a parent to have the ability to decide where your kids go to school. Um, and you, it's, you know, it's like any, it's like shopping anywhere. You get, a, you have this market, you go anywhere, you find the best fit. And for me, it was going to a school. I know faith is very important to you, Mr. Vice President. It's very important to my family too. We're Lutheran. And so we found a school that fits, um, that, that, that meets our educational needs, our also our faith. Um, and our kids go to, you know, they're getting, they're getting um, the word of God every day, every day in school. And that's very important to us. And um, that's something I didn't have growing up um, when, I went to, um, when I went to public schools in Milwaukee. So for us, having that power as a parent um, gives me, you know, it, it get, I'm going through the process now with my daughter going to high school. We, we're, we're choosing between six, seven different schools, all different, all meet different needs. And we're just trying to tailor, hey, what fits my daughter um, the best? Um, and we finally decided on a school, it's a choice school. And I tell you, the power of the voucher, um, the freedom it gives you as a parent is very powerful. And I just, you know, we had it here in Wisconsin for a long time. Um, I just wish more students around the country had it. And I, I appreciate the work you did in Indiana to give many, um, you know, that choice to parents and students in Indiana. And um, I just, you know, with the education scholarships, um, I think that's a great idea. Give more, the more people, the more choice we can give, the more freedom we can give parents, the best for everybody. And it lifts all boats, public, private, charter, sure. homeschooling, you know, everybody, it works for everybody. And um, parents need more choice around this country. So thank you very much. And, um, it's great to have an administration that, that really, really supports choice. And so and tell, and extend that to the president, too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chris. Great job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I agree with you. I, I think it's, um, it's uh, the beauty that we have in the state, the ability to um, give parents the opportunity to choose. It's, it's amazing. We particularly, uh, being Hispanic, I know it opens opportunities that our children would never would have seen. So um, thank you for doing uh, what you do, because I know you're a warrior on the, on the ground. And, and with that, let's move to, um, to, to the reality. And the reality is that the Trump administration, Kellyanne, has been a huge supporter of school choice uh, to, to benefit all families. But I have to say, particularly um, benefits families of color. I can testify, I see the families, and it, and it brings opportunities that they would never imagine. Um, uh, can you let me know what is the driving force behind this, this commitment that the president and the administration has? In a word, Tammy, the commitment is about the kids. So the president has spoken at length about the forgotten man and forgotten woman of America, but this is about the forgotten child. 
And we want to make sure that every child has the access to a quality education that is best for that particular child. Of all the one-size-fits-all policies or ideas in our country, we really should not have that when it comes to our children's education. They should be treated equally and responded to individually according to their needs. And as they progress through their academic careers, uh, their desires and their goals and their dreams as well. And so I think the concept of school choice is very simple, but it helps to solve a very complicated problem in this way. When people hear school choice, they say, well, that sounds good. What does it mean? It means that the parent in consultation with the student, but really the parent has the right to choose the best education for his or her child. And I will tell you that in this country, our great democracy of America, people disagree very passionately, passionately on any number of issues. Some issues we are split right down the middle in this country, and that's great for our democracy. I'm yet to hear in 30 years in this space, yet to hear a compelling argument on behalf of the child, on behalf of the student, as to why people would oppose giving a parent the opportunity to make a better choice for his or her, student, his or her child. There is no good answer in that regard. The president put it best in 2015 when he was a candidate. He said, if we can dig out the Panama Canal, put a man on the moon, win two world wars, we sure the heck ought to be able to provide a quality education to every child in this country. And that is the mandate, that is the mission, but it still remains the goal because it is not yet completely realized, not by a long way. But the first step is making sure that those who love the child most and know the child best are empowered, are equipped to make those choices. As the Vice President said, uh, we've worked together for a number of years. He's being very modest because in short order, after he became the governor of Indiana in January of 2013, Indiana's school choice charter program became the largest in the country. And that is remarkable. That's not, cause, that's not coincidence, that's causation. That's not some campaign promise when you're running for office. That's a mission set that you execute on because you know the beneficiaries are the youngest among us and sometimes the most vulnerable among us. And ladies and gentlemen, if we don't do right by our children, everybody else's children, then really who are we as a nation? So that's really what this mission is. Right here in Milwaukee, Governor Tommy Thompson, a lot of folks across the aisle, right, left, and center, in a very nonpartisan and bipartisan way, helped us all understand a little bit better what an actual school choice program would look like and would do. And it was quite bold, and you should all be appreciative of the fact that that great laboratory began right here in your backyard. We're grateful. I think over time, more people understand what that has meant as these programs have continued across this country. I think school choice and educational freedom and these opportunities, these new opportunities that the Secretary and the Vice President have presented today, they have tripartisan support, really strong support across demographic and geographic and gender and race and ethnicity and uh, whether you have children or not children of your own, a socioeconomic status, they, they cross all these boundaries because people really do say it's a great idea. I think that, um, as the Secretary has said, the pandemic affected every school ch child in this country somehow. Every student in this country was affected somehow. The pandemic truly did change the way we look at distance learning, but our goal is to make sure that there's not a lot of distance in that learning, whether you're getting on a computer or in the classroom or through your parents. No child was spared, and really what school choice says is that no child should be excluded from a great choice. So Mr. Vice President, thank you for your continued leadership on this issue. You were the tie-breaking vote on that 529 legislation in De on December 1st, 2017, in the wee hours of the night, tie-breaking vote, and you got it done. And that tie-breaking vote, Mr. Vice President, really did, does allow these families to start earlier in their children's lives to save and invest for education later on. They don't have to wait to backload it, they could actually front load it. And I very much appreciate you making this policy, you and President Trump making this policy, really a very central focus of your work.
thank you very much, and thank you all for having me here today. Thank you. Thank you, Kellyanne, and I couldn't agree more. The school choice movement, it's about the student. And we, it's something that we have to constantly remind ourselves. It's about the student. So um, I would like to ask you, Elisa, as a mother of Waukesha STEM um, Academy Prep, I would like to ask you as a mother, what are your concerns um, as we're heading back to school in fall? Summer will be over in a blink, and um, I don't have little ones anymore at home, but I, I can barely imagine what you're going through. So what are your concerns? What do you think the, the future looks like for, from a mother perspective? Yes, thank you for having me. Um, it's very difficult as a parent um, trying uh, to do multitasking uh, with my son. Um, he's just turned 14. And it's very difficult for him because he's like, Mom, I miss the, the socializing. And I'm like, yeah, I understand, but we still have to manage to come together. Nothing lasts forever. Mm -hmm. And you have to get out there and do your best. And there's a lot of people there who could help you. There's counselors, there's teachers. Um, and everyone's working together to move along mm -hmm. and um, try to do our best in all these situations that we're going through. What concerns me is, um, as a Latina, it, it's hard for us because we have to work double because of our language. Mm -hmm. um, so we really, really have to work really hard uh, to get to where most people um, get there halfway or they say, that's it, I'm done, you know, it's too hard, I can't do this. Um, and I, I always tell my son, you know, you have to do your best, you know, and if you don't understand something, you go and ask. There's help out there. There's people who can help you get through this. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be fine. You're gonna succeed. If I succeed, I know you can succeed. And sometimes we have to talk to them about that and let them know that they can do a good job no matter what the job is, no matter where they're at, they can succeed. Right. You know, And they can put out, everybody is unique and everybody has their own way of thinking and processing. But everyone can get there, no matter who you are, what color you are, um, just go for it and don't look back. You know, that's what I tell my son and he's, he's getting there. Um, sometimes he does get a little confused and it just, it's so much going on around the world and everything that's been going on that it, it does get overwhelming. Um, but you just have to be positive. You have to talk to them and let them know, you know, this is the good, the bad, and the ugly but you can go forward and it's gonna be fine. Nothing lasts forever. You'll be fine. And he, you can see his beautiful smile, I'm sorry. <laughs> his beautiful smile and I feel good about that because I know I'm doing my job as a parent and I know you guys are doing a great job um, on what everyone's doing in their areas. So I'm very pleased um, the programs that, he actually graduated um, this June, um, and now he's gonna go to high school, so I'm excited with all the options he was gonna have, and um, yeah, I'm just so excited to be here and to you know let everyone know a little bit about the perspective of a parent. Thank you. Thank you, Elisa. Congratulations on that uh, child ready to go to high school. Yeah. Big applause to you and the students. And, and thank you for being so honest and sharing the struggles that, that parents right. faced. We, we talk about the wonderful job educators have done. Uh, I have to say we owe a big round of applause to all the parents yes. that had become oh, educators yeah. at home. Um, yes. it's, it's definitely been challenging. And, and on that note, uh, I would like to take it to you, Trené, because you have that, that uh, principal, teacher perspective. Um, so you had to deal with everything that happened at school, but you also had to take into consideration that you were dealing with human beings, 
with, with parents and students that might or might not like this new model of education. So take us to that day when you found out that that was it, you were not going back to school, what happened, what did you learn, and, and what would you not repeat? And you only have two minutes. I know we talked for, for a long time before <laughs> this started. But if you, can, if you can tell us in a nutshell what that was um, and where you are. I think the first time I heard it, I was like, it's going to be short-lived, like we're going back to school. My mind was like, short, it's OK. It's going to be fine. And then as the date kept getting pushed back, and then I was like, OK, what's well, going to be over on this date? So then I text the vice president. I'm like, OK, we'll have a week. Can we go back for one week? He's like, you're not listening. And I was like, no, we can go back for one week. Like, it's one week. I just wanted to be back with the kids because I knew this new norm was not what we were used to. And so I think as the principal, my goal and the vice principal's goal. We both just, we made sure to reach out to every kid, every family. We spent the first week literally just calling saying, hey, how are you? What do you need? Can I do something for you? What can we get you? Not even thinking about the whole education piece. We just wanted to check on the child and the family's well-being. And I mean, we got food. We donated things. We did social distancing. It was just making sure that kids felt like, okay, this is happening, but it's still normal because I see my leaders, I see my teachers, or we made videos, we called, we did a lot of things, we started to incentivize it. And so I think having strong relationships with the families that I have made it easier to transition to the education piece, but it was more of like, this is our new norm and this is how it's going to be and having sincere conversations on you may not know how to do this and it's okay, but here's 10 other teachers there's their phone number, here's when they're gonna be online, let them take care of it for you so it's not a parent at home having to do homework, having to do your own job. Um, it was let us do this for you, like this is what we do every day, it's our new norm, let us help you with it. And so I think making parents feel like, okay, we know you're struggling, we know you're going through a lot, this isn't what we expected either, but we're here for you, made the process easier. Not what we wanted, but it just made it easier for our kids and our families. And I think um, even as a parent myself with two high schoolers and a middle schooler, I was like, this was not the plan. Like, help me out here. And so I could see it from both sides of like, yes, I have 270 plus babies to take care of, but I also have three at home that I have to juggle too. And so I think looking at both ways, what do I want as a parent? And making sure I reached out to parents and gave them those same things helped the process. Wow. Anything you would not repeat, Trinae, <laughs> all I that think, you've gone through? Um, I think something that I would not, well, no, I don't think so. Because, I mean, we made videos. We, we stayed engaged with our parents. Um, we made sure we got Chromebooks out right away. And so I don't think there's anything I would take back. Um, it wasn't what I wanted, but it, it was what we had. And, I'm, and we made the best of it for our kids just so that they could feel like, okay, this is normal, but it's not normal, but it's our new normal. You're Thank you. Thank you for, for humanizing everything that we had been going through um, because that's reality. Um, schools closed, but really what happened is that we didn't see our students there. Um, so thank you for, for bringing normality to their lives um, to, to your extent. As you said, and I love that you would not change a thing. We all learn. And you're a positive person as well. We said that. We're going back to school in fall. <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> Calvin, um, I think that education reform models that we see in Wisconsin direct the money to schools or systems. With all of these changes that, that we're already going through, do you, um, do you think they, they, there's room for uh, discussion to probably see education savings accounts or work on more individualized plans or even give uh, grant schools innovation grants so they can um, just work with the times, with the new times that we're facing? What do you see? What's your perspective in this? And, and I hope you're a positive person as well. <laughs> Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you, Mr. Vice President, for coming back to Wisconsin again. Secretary DeVos, welcome back. Um, you, all have already, you already know about the history, the rich history here in Wisconsin. Nonetheless, this pandemic, I would say, 
has reawakened this movement of school choice, in my opinion. Hmm. And I say that to reiterate what many of you have stated thus far about empowering parents, all right? We are still moving forward and wanting to create this platform where parents have voices and they can exercise those voices, those choices. And to your question, Tammy, the education savings accounts, things and other programs or other incentive programs would be tremendously helpful nationally, but more specifically here in Milwaukee. And the reason why I say that is there were a number of students, a number of families that went without Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. went without having Chromebooks mm -hmm. to do their homework. I'm incredibly grateful because I wear a number of different hats. I too, like my good friend Chris, um, aside from my legislative and my community relations responsibilities, I too am a father. I have a beautiful teenage daughter who's a scholar at Wisconsin Lutheran High School where Dr. Fisher is, and I owe a great deal, my daughter owes, our family owes a great deal of gratitude for what they're pouring into my daughter, my child, and I mean that wholeheartedly. But we will, obviously, as we move forward, this has changed tremendously. But if we can have incentives, education, freedom scholarship, anything else that would be able to assist the tens of thousands of families, not only here in Milwaukee, but if we're talking about nationally, look at the impact that we can make. We're talking about effectuating change, providing opportunities for these families, that would be the start, in my opinion. So, once again, I want to thank you, Mr. Vice President, Secretary DeVos, and the only other request that I would actually have of you, Mr. Vice President, is, uh, and Secretary DeVos said that she would assist with this. My dear friend Chris Lawrence, he does have a, a daughter. We're trying to get him to send his daughter to Wisconsin Lutheran High School with my daughter, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. That's great. Thank great you, words, Cal. Great words. Great. Now you you've been asked for a letter of recommendation. It seems like, Mr. Vice it President. Like it. <laughs> um, Calvin, thank you. Thank you very much for um, for sharing your perspective. I agree that the Times, if anything, had really um, open the reality to school choice. We, I think we all realize that all children are different and one model doesn't suit every child. We, we realize that at home because some of them were jumping up and down and, and not sitting by the computer where they needed to be. And, and some others just loved it and were uh, doing even more than the, what they were supposed to do. So this, this is de definitely interesting times and and the door is wide open to consider the options for everybody. Mm. Um, I think everybody needs to be open for that. I think if anybody knows uh, children, it's educators, and, and educators know when a model is not fitting a child. And so it, let's be open to this discussion and let's bring it back to who it's important, which is the children. Um, and, and with that, uh, Todd, first and foremost, congratulations on your um, two-week, right? We're two weeks away from that retirement. Congratulations, thank and thank, thank you, you very much um, for everything you've done for, for the thank children you. in Waukesha. Um, I would like to, to ask you, um, school districts across Wisconsin faced widely different challenges during the pandemic. We right. all know that. Some districts responded quickly, very quickly, and some urban, urban districts did not. Um, can, can you um, let us know how you faced these unique challenges and um, how you overcame them? Sure, um, as, I, as I pointed out earlier, we have a, a, a virtual school, K through 12, with approximately 1,000 students in it, so we were really ready. We, were, we knew how to do this already. Uh, all of our students um, had iPads, teachers' iPads plus uh, laptops. So we were 
ready to go literally at every every level. Now I know other other school districts probably didn't have the advantage, may, may not have had the one-to-one -one computing, and so there were some great challenges there. Um, but I believe, you know, from my, my conversations with other superintendents around the state, everyone was able to step up and do what they needed to do. It's, it, it was a tough situation. Even in a district where we are fully prepared for that, there were a number of challenges and, and, and hurdles we had to get through. But uh, I, I think there was a definite sigh of relief when uh, June came around and we were done. Um, but now the challenge is how do we get to the next school year? We like to be, you know, have a normal school year in our buildings, but what's, what are we gonna have to do to, to make that happen is the big question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for for um, participating in this roundtable and open discussion and, and being so true to what you believe as parents and, and as part of the movement of school choice. And with that, Mr. Vice President, I would like to ask if you have some um, closing remarks for us at the roundtable and from uh, for everybody else attending today's event. Well, and my first request would be to give Tammy a round of applause. I think you've done an outstanding job. When I, when I walked up to her, she said, I hope I'm able to run a good discussion. I thought this was very insightful. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the, the, the thoughtful, candid, uh, and inspiring range of perspectives that we've heard today. Um, uh, and uh, to, uh, again, to Todd Gray, it's, I mean, to hear that you had a virtual school already uh, explains a lot uh, about the way that Waukesha was able to respond during this challenging time, and I, I want to commend you for that. But also, uh, I also want to express appreciation when we talked before the event. Um, uh, you said you'd like to speak about the value of, of uh, choice uh, within the public school system and the charter system. and. And uh, we had immediate meeting of minds. This is, we really do believe that, it, that the principle here is empowering parents to choose whatever uh, school they believe, like some of the parents here are making decisions now, that they believe is most right for them, whether it's a public school, a private school, a religious school. And so thank you for being a, um, th thank you for being a champion of that principle and, uh, and speaking so uh, clearly today. I want to thank Chris Lawrence. Thank you for your leadership. Um, Apparently, I'm not able to come to Wisconsin without seeing you, so um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, more importantly, thanks for your leadership. I tell you, you're a great dad, and uh, uh, you've been a great champion for uh, uh, a lot of families that uh, otherwise wouldn't have the opportunities that they would have, uh, and, and Wisconsin's been leading the nation, and you've been a part of that. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I want to thank uh, the Secretary of Education. She is as tenacious. Uh, an advocate uh, of, uh, of education as I have ever met in my life. And I, I can tell you that I'm, I know that uh, Secretary DeVos is, is going to go back um, with renewed energy uh, with the words that we've heard today, and uh, we're going to work hard on the Freedom Scholarship to be able to expand across the country what you've been able to do uh, here. Um, and uh, to Alyssa, thanks, uh, thanks for giving us the perspective of a great mom. I, um, all of our kids are out of the house, um, and my youngest just finished graduate school. But it's been a challenging time for parents, and thank you for thank you for bringing uh, that to this conversation so clearly. And thanks for reminding us that the moms and dads who all became educators in part uh, in the last uh, in the last several months are all heroes. And so, but thank you again for your great words today and your great insights. Uh, it's really been uh, inspiring. Uh, and, uh, and I must tell you, uh, to uh, I, I will say Principal Howard, uh, uh, Trinae, thanks. Uh, thanks, for, uh, uh, thanks for the way that you, your vice principal, your whole team obviously leaned in to this effort. It's in the highest and best tradition uh, of education in the state. And I, I can tell your students, as well as those kids of your own, are blessed. Uh, are blessed. So uh, thank you for bringing that perspective. And, uh, um, and I, I, I'm intentionally, um, well, I, I did want to say to Kellyanne Conway that um, the forgotten child, I think, is, uh, I'm going to take that back. 
from here. Um, this is a president who, when the people of Wisconsin uh, said yes to this president four years ago, we spoke about the forgotten men and women in this country. Um, but I know this president, I know his heart, and I, I know he was talking about the kids. And so thanks for that, uh, and thanks for uh, the good insights that you shared. Uh, it, really is, it really is about that. We want to expand opportunities, not because of some political objective or ideological aim. It's about, it's about simply empowering parents so that there are no forgotten children. There are no, there, there's no futures lost. Um, and uh, I thought that was especially well said, Kellyanne. Um, and finally, I just want to say, uh, Calvin Lee, I hope you're right. Um, we've passed through such an extraordinary time as a nation, and the, the faith and the resilience and the character of the people of Wisconsin and the people of America has just shone forth. Uh, and, and every day, I mean, Wisconsin's made an extraordinary progress uh, in, in combating the coronavirus. Um, and, and every day we're one day closer to putting it in the past. But I, I'm, I'm very challenged by your suggestion that, um, that there might be in this a reinvigoration as every parent became an educator in part and had to make choices in the way they used their own time and the way they became engaged. Because that's one of the great things about school choice I've always observed is that um, it has the effect of reminding parents that, um, uh, that they're the most important person in their child's life and, and that their decisions and their choices in the best interest of the kid are the best guiding principle. And so uh, I'm, I'm really struck by your comment that maybe this challenging time through which we passed has reinvigorated that principle in parents around the country uh, who have seen that they were able to, to see their way through this challenging time to help their children continue to excel, continue to learn, and maybe that can translate into expanding more choices, more public choices, more public charter choices, more, um, more innovation like uh, at this great STEM academy that we're gathered at and more opportunities to choose even private and religious schools. So um, it's, um, uh, it's through great adversity sometimes um, comes opportunity and maybe we'll, we'll look for that in, uh, uh, in places all across this country. But I thank you. That's a very fresh thought for me about this and I appreciate the insight, Calvin. Uh, lastly, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone here. We've got education leaders. We've got teachers all over here. We've got some great kids. I want to thank Jessica Feskel and Colin Anderson again for also representing all these other great kids. I, I hope they have a chance to say hi to you before I slip away. Um, but uh, lastly, just I, I want to say thank you to Wisconsin. Thank you for, thank you for leading uh, for more than three decades. What you've done here in Wisconsin has uh, generated opportunities for families and children all across America. And I just want you to know we're going to take what we've heard here today, take Wisconsin's example in uh, public and private school choice, and we're going to work every day uh, to make it more possible for more parents uh, across America to choose where their children go to school. So thank you all very much, and God bless you. God bless Wisconsin. <laughs>